All right. I've been wanting to do research on this chick for quite a while. Uh, ever since this whole Brothers of Italy thing started to really come to light a couple of years ago. Um, anyways. Um, obvious fascist, by the way. Giorgia Maloney. Born uh, 15 January 1977, is an Italian politician who has been serving as the Prime Minister of Italy since the 22nd of October 2022. The first woman to hold this position. A member of the Chamber of Deputies since 2006, she has led the Brothers of Italy political party since 2014, and she has been the President of the European Conservatives and Reformist Party since 2020. So... I'll read a little bit more about the initial first part of it, but then I want to skip to um, the Brothers of Italy on her side of things. All right. Um, in 1992, Maloney joined the Youth Front, the youth wing of the Italian Socialist Movement, a neo-fascist political party founded in 1946 by former followers of Italian fascism. She later became the national leader of Student Action, the student mem uh, movement of National Alliance a post-fascist party that became MSI's legal successor in 1995 and moved towards national conservatism. She was a counselor of the province of Rome from 1998 to 2002, after which she became the president of Youth Action, the youth wing of AN. In 2008, she was appointed Italian Minister of Youth in the 4th Berlusconi government, a role which she held until 2011 in 2012, she co-founded FDI, a legal successor to AN, and became its president in 2014. She unsuccessfully ran in 2014 the European Parliament election and the 2016 Rome municipal election. After the 2018 Italian general election, she led FDI in opposition during the entire 18th Italian legislator. FDI grew its popularity in opinion polls particularly during the management of COVID-19 pandemic in Italy by the Draghi and uh, Draghi cabinet and national unity government to which FDI was the only opposition uh, opposition party. Following the fall of the Draghi government, FDI won a uh, 2022 Italian general election. The right-wing populist and nationalist, oh, a yeah, her political positions have been described as far right. She describes herself as a Christian and a conservative, and she claims to defend God, fatherhood, and family. She is opposed to euthanasia, same-sex marriage, and LGBT parenting, saying that nuclear families are exclusively headed by male-female partners. Her discourse includes uh, feminizing what? Uh, feminizationalist demonizationalist rhetoric and cr okay i'm doing uh, hold on guys this is weird feminizationalism sometimes known as feminizational what okay is the association between national ideology and some feminist ideas especially when driven by xenophobic motivation okay so this is definitely common in terms of the rhetoric of population rhetoric being mixed in feminist views um and uh, pro-choice, you still have to ask for permission as this feminal, feminal, feminism uh, is mostly um, very exclusive. So you can see a lot of people falling through the cracks when it comes to this um, organization of feminism. All right. The term was originally proposed by the researcher Sarah are fairest to refer to the processes by which some powers line up with the claims of the feminist movement in order to justify apoporophobic, racist, and xenophobic positions, arguing that immigrants oh, are sexist and that Western society is entirely egalitarian. Oh, okay. That's so, like, not, not specific at all. Like, a whole concept of people are sexist. I don't even understand how that's possible. Like, it's not even, like, a demographic, necessarily. Like, the people within... The, the people described as immigrants 
are a specific demographic that could be sexist in their culture, but this statement alone just makes no sense. Okay, the main critique of this phenomenon focused on the par partial and sectarian use of the feminist movement to further ends based on social intolerance, ignor ignoring the sexism and lack of real social equality in Western society as a whole. All right, going back to, all right. So her discourse includes feminizationist, I, I really have a hard time pronouncing that. Uh, Maloney support oh, and criticisms of globalism. Well, of course. Maloney supports a naval blockade to halt immigration, and she has been accused of xenophobia and Islamophobia. A supporter of NATO, she maintains Euro-skeptic views regarding the European Union, which she describes as Euro-realist, and was in favor of better relations with Russia between 2023 Russia invasion of Ukraine, after which she pledged to keep sending arms to Ukraine. Uh, Maloney has expressed controversial views, such as in 2020, when she praised Gio, uh, Giorgio Almarante, a chief of cabinet in Mussolini's Ita uh, Italian Social Republic, who proposed racist propaganda and co-founded co the MSI. In 2023, uh, Maloney was the fourth on Forbes' list of most powerful women in the world. All right. Skipping ahead, obviously. All right. Leader of Brothers of Italy. In December 2020, or sorry, 2012. I, I don't know why I said 2020. It's not even that late. Okay. Maloney, La Russia, and Cresetto founded a new political movement, Brothers of Italy, whose name comes from the words of the Italian National Anthem. In 2013, Italian general election, she stood as part of the Berlusconi's Central Right Coalition and received 2.0% of the vote and nine seats. She was re-elected to the Chamber of Deputies for Lombardy and was later appointed the, leader, the party's leader in the House, a position that she would hold until 2014 when she resigned to de dedicate herself to the party. She was succeeded by Fabio Rampelli. In March 2014, she became president of FDI, and in April, she was nominated for the 2014 European Parliament election in Italy as the leader of the FDI in all five constituencies. FDI party obtained 3.7% of the votes, not exceeding the threshold of 4%, and she did not become a member of the European Parliament. She refu uh, received uh, 348,700 votes. On 4 November 2015, she founded Our Land, a conservative political committee in support of her campaigns. Our Land was a parallel organization to FDI and aimed at enlarging FDI's popular base. Hmm. Okay. On the 30th of January 2016, she participated in the Family Day, an LGBT rights demonstration declaring herself against LGBT adoption. At the same Family Day, she announced that she was pregnant. Her daughter, Ginevra, was born on 16 December. In the 2016 Rome municipal election in June, she ran for major uh, mayor for the support of U.S or of Us With Salvini, a political party led by Matito Salvini and, an op and in opposition to the candidate supported by Berlusconi's Forza Italia. Alfio Marcini, in May 2016, she promised to name a street after Giorgio Almorante if elected, causing controversy among the local Jewish community and the anti-fascist uh, ANPI. Okay, so we're gonna see who this dude is. So, Giorgio Almorante uh, was an Italian politician who founded the neo-fascist Italian move, uh, social movement, which he led until his retirement in 1987. So not really that too long ago. Like this was all happening in our childhoods. Okay. You know, 
it's amazing that like World War II was fought and the Cold War ended and we all had a good childhood. We got to go outside and have fun. We were kind of dumb to think that like everything was fine, but it was for our own like safety and peace of mind. But as we become older, we realize that these lies were either for our benefit or propaganda to allow it just to happen. But of course, our parents loved us, so it's not like this was ever on their mind. Because they were, you know, uh, 70s kids, 60s kids, like, presumably if you were privileged enough, you, pr you probably had a good childhood. Um, if you weren't in poverty or anything, it was probably average, so... It's just all this stuff, like, after the Cold War ended, like, honestly, it's kind of sad that all of this was slowly boiling over underneath our feet. All right. Wait a second. Oh, okay. All right. Sorry about that, guys. Okay, Maloney won 20.6% of the vote, almost twice that of FI's candidate, that she did not qualify for the runoff, while FDI obtained 12.3% of the vote. During the campaign of 2016 Italian constitutional referendum on the reform promoted by the Renzi government, Maloney founded the number one, uh, founded the No Thanks Committee and participated in numerous television debates, including one against the then Prime Minister, Matteo Renzi. As no one with almost 60% of the votes on the 4th of December, Maloney called for snap elections. When Renzi resigned the next day, she withheld confidence from the next government led by Paolo Gentiloni on 12 December. The 2 to 3 December 2017 Congress of FDI and Treste saw the re-election of Maloney as president of the party, as well as the renewal of the party logo and the joining of Daniel Santanche, a long-time right-wing politician. Okay, so I forget who this is again. Oh, okay. Jeez. Man, she looks like, like a Metal Gear Solid villain or something. Uh, okay. Daniela Gernaro, commonly known by her former married name as Daniela... Santacce is an Italian politician between 2010 and 2011. She served as under secretary to the minister ministry for the implementation of the government program in uh, Berlusconi uh, for cabinet. She is currently the regional coordinator, Brothers of Italy in Lombardy, and the minister of tourism in the Maloney cabinet. Okay. So she's like this right wing person who's a plastic sir. What? Wow. These people believe in purity, but she has to like be fake pure. Well, oh. all right. All right. Moving on. And so to make my point, all of this fascism that's happening across the world. In my opinion, based on where I center my readings, unfortunately. Now, this is not the end-all, be-all. But, as we speak, like every other industrialized nation, uh, their birth rate is falling. And, unfortunately, fascists are very obsessed with pronatalism, as we will see. Italy specifically. All right. Fascist Italy, the battle for births. Okay. It's up to you to create a generation of soldiers and pioneers for the defense of the empire. Benito Mussolini to the women of Italy. And women are charming are a charming pastime, but they should never be taken seriously for they themselves are rarely serious. Benito Mussolini Nazi Germany, Franco Spain, and Fascist Italy needed and encouraged the birth of babies. 
the Nazis arranged conceptions of pure Aryan couples. When too few babies were produced, they kidnapped blue-eyed blonde children from Poland. The Francoists wanted Spanish babies brought up by parents with correct political beliefs, so they kidnapped newborns from mothers with suspect loyalties and sold them to better parents. In Italy, government and church policies combined with tradition to restrict the role of parent to baby factories and little else. In 1925, three years after coming to power in Italy, the fascist government of Benito Mussolini began its attempt in creating the Italian population. The National Organization for the Protection of Maternity and Infancy took control of 5,700 different institutions that cared for women and children. Pregnant women were provided with free food and instructed in hygiene and infant feeding. So obviously this isn't all bad. This is just general stuff people should have, including financial incentives to breastfeed. Um, well, I don't know about that one. <laughs> Even though it's um, the colostrum is supposedly the most important part of that, but never. But I digress. Okay. Anyways, another goal of ONMI was to take to make women understand that the primary role of the fascist woman was to produce children. In 1926, birth control uh, devices and abortion were outlawed as crimes against the race. Sex education became illegal, and the age of consent and the age of marriage were lowered. Mussolini wanted the 1927 Italian population of 40 million increased to 60 million in 1950. In reality, uh, the 1940 population was 47.5 million. Repayment of marital loans were reduced by 10% of the principal for each child the couple had. Married men with more than six children paid no taxes. Bachelors between the age of 25 and 65 paid increased taxes. Uh, actually, okay. Um, okay, I think I read this in one of my book reviews, actually. Uh, but anyways, the Italian civil service only employed parents. The state-owned railroad dismissed the female employees since they should be at home producing and caring for babies. And later, private industry did the same. So in most cases, um, I think authoritarians did this. Uh, it is, I think Hitler specifically, like when it was a a war that was happening that's when abortion and contraceptives were being um made rare you know because you want the generation after people die in the war i mean that makes like cold logical sense but it's not necessarily moral so you see the issue okay in 1925 women were given the right to vote in local elections in 1926 local elections were abolished Women were given two months of paid maternity leave beginning in 1944, uh, or 34, and factories <coughs> employing more than 50 women had to have designated rooms where mothers could nurse their infants. In 1939, women who have five children got a medal for the state. A, a bow was added to the ribbon on the medal for each subsequent child. These documents did not help to feed or clothe large families, or sorry, these decorations. The Catholic attitude of children born out of wedlock was nearly impossible to overcome in Italy as compared with Nazi Germany. The fascists eliminated the possibility of unmarried women uh, anonymously turning or turning in newborns to con uh, convents or orphanages. This was a good change since Italian orphanages for, uh, formed out, farmed out illegitimate babies to ignorant and disputable wet nurses who ran so-called foundling homes over one half of infants sent to foundling homes died well that's sad with onmi single mothers did not have to register as paupers and better still and mothers were supported in keeping and caring for their babies of course the idea of racial purity entered fascist law italians were not to marry people of african descent Later, non-Aryans, i.e. Jews, were added to the list. Fascist anti-feminism did not produce desired results. The birth rate numbers of five births per 1,000 population was 146 per 1,000. In 
1911 and 112 for 1936. The infant mortality rate, deaths per 1,000 live births, was 106 per 1,000 in 1938, higher than it had been in 1930. For comparison, the infant mortality rate in Holland in 1938 was 36.1 thousand. Between 1927 and 1937, the Italian infant mortality rate varied 5 to 18, depending on the region examined. It was 18% in Sicily. Maternal mortality was 27 per 1,000, or 100,000, oh, oh, this is a stat that I've never seen before. Maternal mortality was 27 per 10,000 in 1940 to 1945, but was 24 per 10,000 in 1914. The rate of out wedlock births was 5 per 100 in 1924 and was unchanged in 1932. The rate of voluntary abortion trebled to 15% of pregnancies between 1927 to 1937. 1927 to okay. To conclude with Haidt and Hinton, quote, fascist anti-feminism was not particularly successful. As a turn working class mother stated Mussolini not the one to raise it so it's possible that like people just felt pressured and stressed and so that didn't make it a good environment to have children potentially um anyways so Italy and the um fundamentalism that is happening uh multinationally as we speak they aren't just obsessed with birthrights. It's a uh, resource allocation issue as elites hoard the wealth. And this is something most people agree with. But this is a far more dangerous uh, gripe that these people have on the angle that normal people don't usually have. So just to know that you have similar ideals... But these people want you dead, and this uh, fascist swamp has to be drained, as I said. Alright, I will see you in the next one.